Hello everybody, uh, my name is Mark Pearson. So I'm going to be doing presentation for Dawn Lenovo, basically an update on uh, where we came from last year. For those who don't know me, I'm the technical lead for the uh, Lenovo Linux PC team. Um, and if you don't make it all the way through the presentation, uh, my contact details are at the end, uh, so just skip there. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. So last year I started off with a, a thank you. Uh, this year, this is going to work. Yes, uh, I start with apologies. So um, I am on vacation uh, next week. So during during Nest, and unfortunately, and I'm really disappointed about this, I won't be able to attend Nest. We're off to uh, a friend's cottage uh, on uh, by a lake in Ontario. Uh, that's what I'll be enjoying, um, and it has no internet. And so, yeah, I can't say so I'm genuinely, genuinely disappointed not to make it. I really, really enjoyed Fedora Nest last year. Um, so my apologies. Uh, I got some questions before that I've used for preparing this talk. I would much, much rather have done this as a conversation, dialogue, get your feedback. Uh, obviously, that's not the work. So anything that I don't cover you're interested about, feel free to email me. Happy to have conversations on the Devel. Um, mailing group happy to set up another meeting if that makes sense uh, whatever so um yeah but hopefully this talk will have some interesting pieces for you i'll try and kind of pretend i'm having it as a conversation with me doing all the talking um moving on so oh, i keep clicking on the wrong window <laughs> I wanted to say, do want to say thank you to the Fedora community. It's uh, this year's certainly been a really interesting year, uh, and I really, really appreciate working with the Fedora community. Your fantastic community. I wanted to add in congratulations. I think Fedora has had a, a, an absolutely stonking year. Uh, Fedora 34 is brilliant. Love it. Um, you've won awards. I just actually a quick shout out to the people who write the magazine and do the Fedora podcast. I enjoy both. We both listen. Um, so yeah, thank you for all that you do, um, and uh, keep keep going. <laughs> um, already, oh, uh, review of last year. So as everybody knows, last year has been kind of interesting. Um, X1 Carbon 9 was released with uh, Fedora on and is online and available in North America. We'll have more pieces on that later. Um, there were just the thing that was interesting from my point of view, X1 Carbon 9, we almost had it released at the same time as Windows. We actually made a really big effort to get it out. And I wanted to say thank you to the Fedora community for doing that uh, special release for us. Um, we unfortunately we had some last minute uh, panel issues on the high res panel that were due to the um, PSR2 feature and it took us a while to get that fixed and then get that upstream and then and then so we actually ended up the Calm 9 sadly was released I think it was about a month and a half after Windows um, but it was one of those it was so close to being a beautiful release um, but anyway it's out. Um, so that 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 was a success, uh, and I keep clicking on the wrong window, and it's very irritating. Try the keyboard. Uh, P1 Gen 3 was released as well, uh, a Fedora exclusive. So I'm going to cover some of the issues we had, but that one was one where Fedora flew, um, and funnily enough, we had um, energy cert issues with the Ubuntu one. Yeah, had a uh, exclusive one for the P1 Gen 3. Wasn't necessarily intended, but that's okay. Um, the P15 was not released, I can't type. Um, basically, there were issues with the Nouveau driver and it took us a long time to resolve. Um, so, I, I, you know, a big thank you to particularly Ben Skeggs who worked on solving it for us. And, and it does work now. You can run Fedora uh, 34 on, on the P15 with the Nouveau cards and it, and it, and it works well. Um, unfortunately, by the time we got them solved, it was just too late in the product cycle to actually go ahead and do a web release. Uh, we have P15 Gen 2 coming up, which interestingly has Nouveau issues, but we'll come to that later. Um, but yeah, that, if you're wondering why the P15 didn't show up, that was why. Um, so the next question, so I, I had some feedback uh, questions on the forum. And a lot of them were around the web sales. So I wanted to kind of dive into that and try and explain a little bit what's been happening. 
so it makes sense. Just uh, I've seen various reports, um, you know, podcast, YouTube, sort of, and complaints. So I, I, I'll try and give some clarity. So question from Matthew was, why is the lag time so high? Uh, and order now and get it for Christmas. So I, that, that that one's kind of easy. It's not Linux related. It really isn't. Uh, component shortages. Uh, it's been brutal. Um, and there were, particularly early on, there were a few cases that I specifically went and dived into to try and understand why it was so long because I was concerned it was our Linux program that was the reason, um, but it wasn't. Um, essentially, I mean, their 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 shipping times are, are all over the place, and if you're buying one, I totally totally understand why it's frustrating um, and it's been a variety of components um, cpus ssds anything um, and we're actually getting hit really hard with this year's platforms on the w land the, the wi-fi components so it's it's yeah across the board essentially that it is not meant to be a linux uh, you know it's not really related to linux um, there is a caveat to that, which uh, is the second one. So a question again from Matthew, pricing compared to pre-configured Windows systems. So one of the common complaints I get is if you go on the website, you'll see there's uh, ready to ship, um, which we call RTS. And basically they're pre-configured systems. You, you don't get to modify them, you, you get what you get. Um, and but they're ready, they're ready, available, and they can be shipped, and they're often cheaper than the config to order. And the thing is that Linux falls under the config to order. We do not have any ready to ship models available yet. So a, a lot of the frustration is people look at it and say, well, Linux is more expensive. And if you compare Linux with Windows config to order, then it's uh, no, Linux is cheaper. Um, but then you also start hitting the um, the shipping times because it is config to order and this is there. Uh, one thing to explain, and I'm hoping I don't get into trouble for this, but uh, the ready to ship, basically the way it works is that they pre-order a whole bunch of systems with what they expect to be the most popular configuration. Uh, and those are sitting in boxes in a warehouse somewhere and the different geos pre-order those and they, they're, they're, they're ready. Um, so th there's a few reasons we don't have that for Linux. Uh, one is that we generally don't have our Linux image ready uh, at the same time as Windows. We tend to be a month to a month and a half behind. Um, and the interesting thing is actually, if you look at it, we need to be even earlier than that to give um, them a chance to be able to pre-order these things. So that's one reason. One is that the they just don't have the sales data to know if what what will be the popular systems. So from uh, from the team, the web sales team's point of view, that it's basically it's a risk call, and they have to know which systems are going to be popular and be confident enough they're going to sell them to pre-order a whole bunch. Um, and then we come back to the fact of the component shortages. So we're asking, we'd be asking web sales teams to take a gamble on something that they don't know is going to sell in the configurations. And on top of that, there just aren't enough platformly available. So that's why right now there is no ready to ship. Um, I have had conversations. It is not something, sorry, I've got to get my phrasing right here, but it's something that might happen in the future. They're definitely not against doing it. Um, it's going to be a little bit of persuasion and then taking a, a, a bit of a leap of faith to do it the first time, but it's certainly as long as they're seeing Linux sales and they believe that they can do it, it's, it, you know, it's not something that will never, you know, it, it will happen if, if they think, um, they can sell them. So just as a note for anybody who has been out and bought a Linux system config to order, I mean, thank you. That's golden um, you actually are also really important data points for what is likely to be a popular linux system so there you go you 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 you, you get a drive how this will be considered in the future so um, the next one is uh, interesting so question from matthew what about the world so yes this this has been a big challenge for me i'm pretty sure i was on here last year saying yes we're going to have web sales worldwide and that is still true it's just 
bad year. <laughs> so uh, one of the good things is uh, what we had last year is a whole bunch of configuration. So it was honestly, it was all Lenovo nonsense. Um, when Le Linux was first introduced, it was special bid and they did not want it accidentally sold because um, it's cheaper. Uh, they didn't want it accidentally sold. So there were all these rules put in place to prevent it being sold. Uh, in North and we had to basically wind those back, dial those back, find them all, clear them and, and that stuff. So that has all been done. It, it's a lot of stupid paperwork driven me nuts. My hair is definitely a lot grayer than it was last year, but that, that's fixed and good. So the good news is, is we have our first platform up in Europe. Yes, we do. Um, we actually have the X1 Carbon 9 up in Europe, but I'm so, so, so frustrated that they goofed. Um, and this is a little bit working with web cell teams for the first time. We went, I went through this with North America. So they have Ubuntu up. They do not have Fedora up. <laughs> you can go and see. I, it will be fixed. It is not deliberate. It's totally an accident. I think they just, web sales team didn't understand. So just to explain, I have been nagging the web sales teams relentlessly, uh, basically every week. I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Um, so that they did get it up and, and got it up in time for Nest, but they put the wrong platform up. So uh, we'll get that fixed. And so I'm pretty confident we'll get the S1 Carbon 9 up with Fedora in Europe. Um, and then hopefully from there, I will be able to grow the, um, grow the portfolio. So obviously Europe is not the world. So, um, just to, um, so I got pinged, uh, the, the other thing that's interesting is I have had lots of good conversations with the other geos. Um, the component shortages is really making it hard this year. And for instance, lab in America, absolutely. They want to sell Linux, but. They just said they can't take it on this year. They, they were pretty stressed out, actually. And they're saying they're just really struggling with this constant churn of what's available, what isn't. So basically, they said, look, come back to us um, when things have calmed down a bit, and uh, we'll see what we can do. But right now, we can't do it. So I appreciate their honesty. Um, and obviously, I'll keep following up as we get platforms and just monitor it and see at some point we will do it. Um, and I know India were enthusiastic as well. They had some, they had to go check some local rules and things to check. So I'm, I'm optimistic that one's going to happen. I can't give you a date when, but they were definitely enthusiastic about it. Um, I have had positive feedback from other web sales teams. It's a little bit a case of turning the handle and getting it out and which a lot of it is which platforms they were willing to do and, and those type of things. So I don't, that was a very long way of saying, yeah, we haven't delivered yet. And I fully recognize that and that we are working on it. Um, we'll get there. There is progress. Uh, okay. So the next uh, bunch of questions that I got uh, from the forum were all really awkward to answer because most of them are forward looking, but there was a, a number of them around AMD. So I'm going to cover those separately. So uh, Matthew Miroslav, um, what about AMD? So um, we do have some AMD platforms. So I'm assuming the question is more about Fedora and AMD, but I'm just going to give a bit of an update on, on the AMD platform. So we, we actually had um, quite some trouble with the AMD platforms for last year's related around uh, battery drain and power usage issues. Um, the worst parts of those are resolved. There are, it's still not perfect, still still places to go. Um, and some people who are watching this might know about some of our threads on the Lenovo forum. So um, there, there, are, there are still issues there. Um, the AMD team, uh, I was just want just, they, they've got a, a client Linux engineering team and they're doing some amazing work. So there is some great stuff coming out of AMD right now, um, but I can't comment on that one. Um, so we did actually, I'm not sure I should mention this either, but we did look at doing Fedora on one of the AMD platforms last year, because I know that was a lot of the feedback. Um, honestly, it was gated by the fact that we had these energy certification issues. So it just didn't happen. And this is, this is part of the Linux project's growth uh, and experience. Um, question from Neil, um, let you guys read it. Basically love to see an AMD Ryzen 
variant of yoga. Um, yeah, that would that would that would be nice. Um, and question for Michelle about uh, you know an AMD version of the T series or the P1 uh, X1 comes. So I unfortunately cannot tell you about future platforms, but I completely agree those would be fantastic platforms, and hopefully we will see them. Um, okay, yeah, I just, I, I, this is like, no, I can't say, but um, question for Matthew, what about ARM? So actually this one I kind of can say because we do have a few ARM platforms in Lenovo. There is no Linux plan on ARM yet. I went and asked, looked into it. They're not seeing, not seeing the demand. Uh, Lenovo are really quite customer based. So if ARM is important, um, ask for it and uh, you know what, it's a good time to cover this. So uh, I had an interesting conversation with what is the best way of, of giving feedback that this is what you want. So um, online forums, interestingly, are a good thing to do. Um, they get monitored and, and if topics come up repeatedly to do that. So um, online forums good. If you buy a system with Windows and you wish that it, you would have bought it with Linux if it was available, um, Apparently, after 90 days, you get a, uh, a survey, uh, an owner's survey. That is a really good way of giving direct feedback that will get munched in. And so, um, yeah, if, if you buy a system and it wasn't what you really wanted and you went and installed a proper operating system on it straight afterwards, no, I didn't say that, um, then, then let them know through the, um, through the survey. Uh, another question for Matthew, more options, lower end systems, higher end ones with more RAM. So I cannot comment on the lower end systems, but I'm sure that will happen. And higher end ones, I was a bit surprised by that one because one of the things we do actually have Linux on all our high end platforms. So I was a bit unsure that one, like all the workstation, if you want a beast, they're there. I think Matthew's got the P620, which is one that I have not been able to get my hands on personally, but it's, it's nice and, and runs Fedora well. Um, so I'm not sure about the ones with more RAM. I guess maybe that might be a question of, I know the X1 Carbon, they wanted the eight was maxed out at 16 gig. And um, so I know on the Carbon 9, you can buy a 32 gig option, which is quite nice. Um, question from Neil, Yoga Gen 6 shipping with Fedora. Yep, that would be great. So I, I mean, yes, these things would be good. I, I will make the comment that the Gen 6, so the Yoga has um, has Linux enablement on it. The, the My key aim is is to make any Linux distro work on, on, on all of our platforms. So uh, yes, I would love to expand the Fedora program. I, I, I think Fedora is fantastic. Um, you can you can buy it knowing that I mean if you bunch runs on it then everything is upstream and uh, actually no sorry my wife is running on the Gen five but I mean the Gen six it, it Fedora runs well on it I, I, there are no issues to that that I know of there and Michelle asked about the new X one Nano so funnily enough I I've been using Fedora thirty four on the Nano as my sit on the couch in the evening watch Netflix that kind of stuff uh, is great. It works really nice. It, it was one of those, we had a really painful enablement experience with the Nano. It was our first Tiger Lake. And there were a few other things that caused us headaches. Um, so I didn't like it because it <laughs> gave me so many headaches. And, and it sat on my shelf uh, a little bit ignored. And then I needed, you know, I, I can't remember what it was. Something I looked at and I was like, oh, this is quite nice. So that's actually my current, not, I don't work on it. The screen's bit small but I, I actually it's, it's it's a nice system so i assume michelle ultimately you're sitting there going to be doing a fedora release on it so that's uh yeah we don't have fedora on it uh, as yet but it I, I can personally vouch that it, it's running nicely um it's kind of kind of, kind of a nice machine Alrighty, so this one was not on the forum this is all on me but i wanted to do a quick update on w1 because it's been an interesting one and i have some questions so even though I can't have a conversation, I have a question. I'm not quite sure how that works. Anyway, so um, WAN support is finally coming on some platforms. So that WAN has been a really slow burner. Uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it last year, if not, it, um, it's something that has taken far, far, far too long to get there. But it's it, it's coming. It, it really is. It's like so close. <laughs> 
but anyway, uh, so FIBA Commerce upstream, I believe it's actually accepted now. Uh, support for the L860, it was supposed to be upstream August last year, so it got there. That's this is this is this is where some of the challenges are for doing new hardware in Linux. But so if you have the L860, then there is a PCIe driver for it, and I believe it's I believe it's in 513. Maybe there there were some suspenders you missed, so I'm not. I, I, not 100% sure, but I know it's, it's close. I want to give a special shout out to Quectel. Um, so they're doing the 4G uh, modem on this year's platforms. They did a really quality job getting W1 support uh, delivered. So not only for their modem, but they actually did a new W1 uh, subsystem. Um, uh, and they got that upstream and, you know, just were great to work with. So. Just want to recognize them you know if, you, if anybody from quicktail is listening to this it's like yeah thank you um lenovo have been slow on actually delivering the solution and i'll get to that in a bit but i just you know they they did a great job and i also want to give uh you know i mentioned foxconn for our 5g modem they got to follow on a lot on the work that quicktail had did but again they they really got it upstream it's delivered it's in 513 and um the 5g modem um is is working and that's that's pretty cool i don't i think it's cool there are some caveats there's always caveats um so there's an fcc unlock utility which i've had some discussion with the modem uh maintainer about um basically the way it is to me fcc um certification rules the eagle homologation on these platforms to make sure that they're they're safe to use and they they are within spec and so there's this um, lock that is on the modem so it doesn't work out it doesn't work without it being unlocked and that's software based and it's closed source software based which makes it really awkward um, so we <laughs> this is where we're still learning so we did a snap um, and the it's not Actually, we've done a. It's not actually released, but it's going to be released in the next next couple of weeks, I think, um, for both the Quetel and the Foxcom on the platforms where we're supporting it. So we did a snap, and we thought this was cool because snap will work everywhere. And then I got some quite strong feedback that this was not the right thing to do. Um, so, I, and I'm sure there's people watching this just going, "Oh, Mark, you idiot!" And yeah. So, uh, so some of that's on me, some of it's on the W1 team, but yeah. So I would like some guidance on the best way to make this available for Fedora. So obviously we can't preload this closed source binary utility in our Fedora preload image because we don't modify the preload. Um, and so I would love some guidance on what to do. Um, I think flat pack might be the way forward, but I'm genuinely open. On our side, we want something that isn't a huge maintenance effort. I'm very aware how slowly they delivered this already, and I don't want to make it even slower. So I'm looking for something that's relatively easy. Uh, the other default option, which I've had in mind, is just to have the utility on the Lenovo Sport page with instructions on how to install it. I think we might do that anyway, just so that any distro can do it. But Anyway, if there's any feedback, let me know. Um, I'll probably raise this on the develop this after next week. Um, but yeah, so that's one. The other thing I'm going to flag because I think it's going to cause some pain points is um, we have to buy these platforms and it's uh, expensive and it takes time. So the guidance from the W1 team is they're not going to do all our platforms, which I know is going to be frustrating. So I know the carbon and the yoga are in scope. The others are very much a little bit based on demand. So, uh, and I know that's going to upset people. So, um, I, I mean, I'm hoping we move to a stage where it's just not an issue. It's just like, yep, yeah, this is part of Linux enablement and we do it for all of them. But for right now, they're focusing on just getting it done for a couple and then going to gauge and see how it goes afterwards. So, um, yeah, happy to take feedback on that. But I just wanted to make sure, you know, it's, it's, it was understood. Already, uh, think LMI. So this was triggered by an update uh, by a question on the forum. But um, so think LMI is our utility so that you can go and change BIOS settings. 
um, and it was accepted upstream. Uh, I think it's going to be available in 5.14. Um, so I actually did the upstream commit for that one. And I just, uh, I wanted to stop here and just say a big thank you to the kernel community, uh, particularly Hans as the um, uh, x86 platform maintainer, but a whole bunch of other people as well who helped me and reviewed it. Um, for me, it was just, I, I, I've been working with Linux for a long time. I ha I've started contributing more upstream and just, it works. It's like, this is why Linux is awesome because what went upstream is some of the best code I've written. And I don't really think I can take credit for that. That's because of the help and guidance and people looking at it going, no, this should be bad. It's really, and it's really cool. So that's why Linux is awesome. And, and it just, yeah, they, it's, um, from my point of view, it was a really useful learning experience, but I also really like the fact that I knew what I, what went upstream was better than if we just done it as a closed source module. That's That to me was like, yeah, I, and I knew it, but going through the experience was interesting. So yeah, there you go, random Mark Witherings. Um, we have more changes coming there. We have some enhancements that we're gonna do, mostly around the Think Center platforms. They have um, some different um, mechanisms that come in. And, uh, but anyway, the, the key parts are there and, and, and it should work. I uh, would love any feedback. So there was a really interesting question from uh, Tomas. Uh, apologies if I got pronunciation wrong. Um, is Lenovo planning to integrate this into GNOME control centers? So honestly, I hadn't thought of it until you mentioned that. And I was like, that's a great idea. So uh, planning, no, uh, but I would love to do it. Uh, I have no experience doing GNOME sort of like development myself. I know that for the platform profile stuff that went out recently, um, which was based on some kernel work that I did as well, um, but they did that. So I, I think it'd be a good thing to do the, with the new firmware attributes class. I don't think it's Lenovo specific. I think we can do something that works for uh, all vendors, which is even better. And uh, anybody, any KDE fans out there as well, other desktops. Um, yeah, let me know. Uh, I would love to work and help on that or get someone on my team to help me with that. Um, I have some points later about why that would be a good thing. Um, but yes, short answer is um, it wasn't planned, but it, it should be. So thank you for raising it. <clears throat> and there we go. Okay, so other questions. Uh, so I have a couple of these. These were just basically picking up some of the other questions that came up on the forum. Um, make sure I got all of them. So um, question for Michelle, basically about how we work with NVIDIA. So yeah, NVIDIA are interesting. Um, we obviously, we had that problem on the P15, which just because of the Nouveau driver meant we couldn't release platform. It, it Essentially, we had issues with suspend and resume and external monitors. And so it didn't pass our QA. And you know we, we can't ship a platform if you're going to take it home and plug it in, it doesn't work. It's kind of interesting because obviously if you took the closed source binary, um, it works beautifully, uh, but we want the experience when you unpack it and open it and plug it in. We, we don't want the first thing you either hit is a kernel crash. So um, I will say that and I have to be a little bit careful and say, so I think NVIDIA are really stepping up their Linux support. I think we're helping be a large part of that. I hope so. Um, I don't have the most open communications to NVIDIA. I don't actually have access to their engineers directly like I do to some of the other vendors, but I think that's improving. Um, I was really excited to see the Wayland support is being added because um, I think that's important. Uh, I would love personally to see them support Nouveau even if it's not for all the features, just so that you know you can use the Nuvo driver and have have it work, have uh, be able to you know connect your monitor, suspend zoom, all that stuff. Um, so yes, we are working with them. We put in those quests. We work with the Red Hat engineers closely as well. And you know, again, shout out to the Red Hat graphics team, uh, Carlos and Ben and 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 Laud and, and and all those people who help us um, on, on the graphics side. Genuinely appreciate it because it's such a complicated stack. Um, so yeah, we're engaged. Uh, there was a question from Tomas, how to get developer discount Collins. I don't have an answer for that. I'm sorry. Uh, I, actually, I, I was going to say, so yeah, my focus really is to get the web sales going. And if there's not a web for that stuff, um, yeah, sorry. I, I don't know. I just don't know what I can do there. Uh, find someone friendly. 
<laughs> Look at you that does. Um, question from Patrick. This one was interesting. So, what next for thermal support and, you know, with the 11th gen Intel CPU, GPU, and, and that sort of thing? So, um, again, I don't have a good answer here, but I think it's becoming increasingly important. I know this year I had seen quite a few thermal related issues around our firmware. Um, some of it actually interestingly being because the thermal team have just been a little bit um, conservative on their design. Um, so we, we've had a few issues there. Uh, the other thing that I'm kind of aware that's happening is that the thermal D adaptive support, which is using DPTF, which is the same, essentially using that, that Intel uh, technology that's for Windows, um, that's getting good. Uh, and uh, I have had some interesting discussions with the Intel power engineers um, and, and honestly I've seen cases where the thermal D adaptive is better than the Lenovo firmware which is something we need to look at and I don't know what's going to happen it's kind of hard to switch to something which doesn't have official support but if it's better it's kind of hard not to so I don't have good answers for you but yeah I think it's it's important I've seen a few threads about how you can tweak the power for CPU and GPU. Um, I haven't looked into that myself. It's not it's, it's not been a focus item yet. So sorry, not not a great answer. I don't have any golden bullet ones, but uh, if you know of anything or something that we should be focusing on to make the experience better for Linux users, please let me know. Uh, happy to run with that. OK, uh, more questions. So th this one was also a question from Matthew. How well is this doing? Does Lenovo see its success? And it's funny. So when I first looked at this question, it's kind of so many different ways. So um, from my personal point of view, I get to see a lot of problems. It's, it's a lot of problem solving. Sometimes it's a bit draining. Um, but I actually think the program is, uh, is successful. I think we're moving slower than I would like. There's definitely pieces of it that I'm frustrated with how long it's taking it to solve this. And I'll cover some of those in, in, in a slide. So, But overall, I think the experience of Linux on Lenovo is getting better. And more importantly, within Lenovo, I'm starting to see people really think about Linux. And so from my point of view, that's a success, right? As ultimately a Linux user, um, I like it, the fact that there's a new feature going in the BIOS and there's a long email thread and someone in the middle says, hey, what are we doing about Linux? And then I get pulled in. And, and that's good. That's, that's important. And even if we're not, even if we still got a lot of work to do on the delivery front, I think these are big steps in the right direction. So um, from that point of view, it's good. From a sales point of view, like, I, our sales numbers are up a lot compared to previously, but then again, it's a little bit a case of you're going from zero to, so if you, you know, um, realistically, we're still tiny, tiny sales numbers, and it's not helped by all the issues that we've covered above with the web sales and that side of things. Um, I am seeing more interest from corporate sales, um, basically because we have the Linux support, and that's good. That drives, that honestly, I mean, for you know regular users, we get a benefit uh, off a lot of that. So yeah, uh, I, I don't have any issues with that. That's, that, that's cool. Um, and uh, so, and then at the executive level, I, it's always interesting. Sometimes Linux is a little bit of a pain point, like our schedules are a nightmare. Um, and when they change a hardware component the last minute because there's shortages and they change it for something that doesn't have a driver upstream uh, and the impacts for that and then somebody says well why is your schedule three months late it's like well just linux doesn't doesn't change like that right um so it's, it, it's so, sometimes it's a bit of a mixed bag but ultimately i think we're well viewed we're growing uh which is good portfolio is growing, the team is growing. So I'm going to claim it's a success with, there's a long way to go still. There's a lot to do. Um, and uh, so yeah, I keep giving vague answers. Yeah. Um, another really good one from Matthew, uh, what can we do to make it even better from the Fedora side? So genuinely, uh, I really enjoy working with the Fedora community and you guys have been so supportive and I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I think a lot of the steps to make it better are probably more on the Lenovo side. One thing I really would like to figure out is how to get my team 
um, including myself, contributing more. We haven't done a lot this year, but it's certainly something I'm eyeing is <clears throat> we have the fixes that go upstream, which is the right thing to do. They will eventually flow down, but I want to see how we can accelerate how those little fixes get into the distros and, and obviously Fedora will be a, a you know, a, one of the main targets for that um, so that users can, can get going on their platform quicker rather than having to wait um, for, but I don't want to break the process either. So I think that I'll definitely be looking to do more active collaboration. Um, and I think that's going to happen anyway, because there are, there are, there are, there's growth coming to the Fedora project. So um, yeah, probably shouldn't have said that. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, I put together a slide. This one was kind of funny because I could have, I could have gone for heaps of different items. There is so many things still to do. But I, I tried to pick out, uh, and honestly, this could change daily, what some of the key items are that are, that are on top of my mind as th these are things that we have to do. Um, I still see too many firmware issues, honestly. Um, we've had some painful update problems, and our LVFS delivery is still lacking. And the just the whole update cycle issues. There's uh, there's lots of scope for improvement. There's definitely some good exercises happening here. It's definitely one where I know there is progress being made, which is good. Um, but it's a it's a high priority one. It, it, sorry, I'm kind of jumping here, but I think firmware. One of the things that I've learned um, since joining this team is, I mean, Linux works well on dot platforms, but without the firmware team support on this platform. The Linux experience is always going to be a little bit clunky, and so you, you uh, I've become more aware how important it is to have the firmware team support this. Uh, ultimately, from an open source point of view, that's kind of a shame, but I'm working with what I've got. Um, enablement times another key one. So yeah, we we lag. Uh, this year has been terrible um, for that. Like the X1 Carbon was really disappointing. We have our T14, T15 Gen 2 that. Windows is out. We've got network driver issues on the Intel side that we're working with Intel on, but we're just, our schedule's just slipping like crazy. So I get yelled at because we're late. And, and I get customers who go and buy the Windows system and then they're saying, well, hey, my network performance sucks. What's going on with that? It's like, yeah, I know. Um, and, and just various pieces around that are AMD platforms, just so you know, for Gen 2, they have been impacted by the WLAN component getting changed at the last minute. So we're waiting for Realtek to get some driver code upstream, which is mid-August. So it's that kind of issue. So a lot of this goes back to, in our process earlier, making sure we get earlier access to systems and that hardware teams recognize they can't just change stuff because Linux can't just change, you know, add in a new driver in, in a week. It just doesn't work like that. Um, a lot of that is working with the vendors as well to get support out earlier. Um, and again, there's some great things happening on there. Um, so I think it's going to get better anyway, um, but it's still still a challenge. <clears throat> Worldwide sales, we've discussed, this is a high priority for me. Um, next year? <laughs> I mean, no, no, I, it, it's, I keep chipping away at it. I'm genuinely, I'm sorry. I know there's lots of people who want to buy these systems and I, I, I want to sell them. It drives me nuts that we have this and we can't sell them. It's just ludicrous. But um, so still, still, it's a priority item. Um, and then, yeah, I touched on this. I really want my team um, to contribute more. So I know I personally love contributing to the kernel, joining in the forums, that, those type of things. And, and I want my team to contribute more. So if you see any Lenovo folk, uh, I'm hoping they may come and join in next. Um, most of my team is in China. Um, so uh, the times are kind of a bit um, sort of like not great. But yeah, please be welcoming them. Um, I think a lot of them are shy language issues um, and, and that's that. But they're a good bunch, and uh, I'm encouraging them to contribute uh, and to, you know, so that we own our products, right? Um, so yeah, if you <coughs> if you see Lenovo uh, contributing, just if you see us do anything stupid, let me know because I know I've done plenty of stupid things, and I'm genuinely quite happy to be yelled at if I do something stupid as long as I fix it. Um, but 
yeah, I, I, I want to support my team as they build up that experience and then find the right way to do it. So, um, the this is kind of a slightly less one. We have a few unsupported hardware components. We kind of make the gray list things that and on the platform don't necessarily have great Linux support. Um, so NFC reader, smart card, though, uh, I must admit, I've been talking to smart card maintainer, and I think uh, we'll get that one solved. IR cameras kind of like, eh. uh, uh, HPD radar doesn't have Linux support right now. Um, there, there's bits. So the list is getting smaller every year. Um, so I think we're getting there. But I'd like to have it so that um, in my ideal world, we have well, you know, Linux users get the same experience as Windows. Um, uh, it's harder than I thought, um, but we're getting there. So, uh, and actually just on that note, I mean, if there's pieces that people look at this going, yeah, it really bugs me that I don't have XYZ under Linux, but they have it under Windows. This, this uh, and, and if you can keep it fairly specific, that helps. I know I've had a few requests for, can you do Vantage on Linux? And I looked into it and honestly, most of the stuff in Vantage you guys wouldn't want. It's just like, yeah, no, we, we don't need that. Uh, we have better ways of doing this. Um, but there are pieces there that, that are going to be important. So um, yeah, if there's specifics would be useful. Uh, and then I can I can get people to work on it and focus it. I, I, I obviously have my own list, but just customer feedback is genuinely useful. Um, I'm going to mention Nippy. I've got Nippy cameras will be in the not too distant future and just scares the bejesus out of me. Um, yeah, so again, I could have had a much longer list, but I would actually, again, this recording, having conversation but without having it is kind of weird, but I would love to know what you guys think is missing, what's good, what's bad, and, and how we can, can work on that. Um, there you go. Uh, I'm not sure how long I've talked to for hopefully not too long. Questions and feedback. I would love to have a conversation. There's my email address, markpearson.lenovo.com. I do actually have a non-Lenovo related question. So, uh, well, kind of. So this email address is a bit of a nightmare for me. Um, we use Outlook servers and they've introduced this safe links feature. And that means that any link in an email now gets replaced with this great big long thread that has markpearson.lenovo.com in it. And the problem with that is I am on a lot of different forums and things, and I have filters set up so that anything with my name or Lenovo in it actually shows up in the inbox and the rest gets filtered into folders and I scan them periodically and pick out pieces that I think are interesting. Um, and yeah, it's completely killing my filters. They don't work anymore in my inbox as hell. So I might actually switch to a non-Lenovo email address just for open source collaboration because there. I asked IT to disable it and they just laughed at me. Um, so if anybody has recommendations on really good email providers for open source, I think I'm looking at Proton Mail, but let me know. Um, I, I, and I'm not interested in running my own mail server. Not just not interested. <laughs> so I looked at that, I was like, yeah, no. Um, but yeah, I, I might actually switch to having a non-Lenovo account, but I'm obviously still at Lenovo, supporting this program 100%. Already, um, again, huge thank you to the Dora community. Uh, I'm genuinely sorry I can't be there in person to answer questions. I family vacation was, was not going to change. My my wife told me in no uncertain terms this was not, not changeable. But um, hope you have a great conference, and I'll look forward to talking to everybody soon. Thanks.